Hello, and welcome to the November 2011 edition of Radnor 411. My name is Jim Doling, and I will be your host. Up first, we travel down to the police department, where Sergeant Andy Black and Detective Sean Dietrich show us how the township's life scan system works. Hello, my name is Andy Block. I'm a sergeant with the detective unit here at the Radnor Township Police Department. For this edition of 411, what we'd like to do is introduce you to our live scan system. It's commonly referred to as the Automated Fingerprint Identification System, or more commonly known as APHIS. What I have right here is the computer itself, and what happens is when we have a criminal arrest, the person that's been arrested for the offense is brought in here to our lockup at the police station. The next thing we do, and one of the first things we do, is we identify and confirm their identity through the live scan or the APHIS system. So the person, their fingerprints are scanned through the computer here, and then they're transmitted through a T1 line to the Pennsylvania State Police Headquarters in Harrisburg through the Bureau of Identification. Within a matter of minutes, once those fingerprints are transmitted via the phone lines to Harrisburg, they are analyzed, they are put into a national computer, and then the identity of the individual is confirmed, provided they have a previous criminal record. That information is then sent back to us via computer, so we have confirmed the identity of the person that's been arrested. There are certain circumstances and situations where we don't know who the person is, they do not have identification on them, and we'll do what's known on our computer as a suspect ID, where that information is entered that they provide us, as well as their fingerprints, and it's sent to Harrisburg. Sometimes we find out that the individuals have been less than truthful with us, and through the suspect ID uh, application on the APHIS or the live scan, we're able to confirm who they are and then file the appropriate charges against that individual. What we'd like to do now is we'd like to demonstrate how the computer and the APHIS and the live scan system works. And we're going to use Detective Sean Dietrich, who has volunteered to scan his fingerprints into the computer. And then we will show you how it's transmitted, as well as the hard copy that is printed at the end of uh, the process with the, the computer itself. So the first thing that we need to do is we have the suspect. And here in this case will be Detective Dietrich's start up or step up to the APHIS machine. And what we use is some water here to enhance the fingerprints. All right, once we've use the water on the fingerprints, we will enter the information into the computer, his personal information or the suspect ID, whatever it may be. What we'll do now is we're going to start scanning uh, Detective Dietrich's fingerprints. The first thing we do is we put the four fingerprints down on the infrared scanner. We hit our buttons and it scans the fingerprints and it comes up on the screen. It'll tell us whether, whether or not the resolution of the fingerprints are acceptable for the computer and to be classified in Harrisburg, which in this situation um, they have been uh, properly scanned in. We do the thumb as well. And again, the computer goes through, it has a system of internal checks to make sure that um, all the points on the fingerprints have been identified and can be classified. We'll run through this for uh, the fingerprints as a whole and then individually roll out each fingerprint. The process itself takes when we go to do the actual scanning, it takes about five minutes to roll the fingerprints out and once that's completed it's about another ten minutes once they're transmitted to Harrisburg before we get that information back. Once that complete, is completed, which we just did, we will save all the fingerprints and then it will be transmitted to Harrisburg for the identification. And while we're waiting for that, we will print out a fingerprint card that we also keep on file here at police headquarters for reference purposes in the future. And I will print that momentarily and I will show you what that fingerprint card looks like to hard copy. This is our final product of the fingerprint card that is printed here and it's kept on file at the Radnor Police Department's headquarters in the detective division. Wow, that was great. Now we'd like to pause for a few announcements from the Recreation Department. Our file shooting contest and food drive in cooperation with Philadelphia Sports Clubs will help kick off the 2011-2012 Radnor Youth Basketball season. Held indoors at the Ragnar Activity Center at Sulpizio Gymnasium, the competition and food drive will feature prizes, entertainment, and much more. Members of the community from all age groups will compete to see who can make the most foul shots and win exciting prizes such as gift certificates, turkeys, pies, and other fun items. Donate a non-perishable food item to earn more shots and increase your chances. Winners will be crowned in each age category. We want to thank our sponsors, Philadelphia Sports Clubs, 
Foot Orthodontics, and Wegmans. Join us for our exciting New York City excursion on your own. Do New York City your way. On Saturday, December 3rd, 2011, the bus departs the Radnor Township building at 7.30 a.m. Enjoy the Big Apple's prime shopping district on this day on your own. Don't like to shop? Take, a, take in a Broadway show, try the American Museum of Natural History or the Museum of Modern Art's latest exhibits. Bringing the family? Maybe a visit to the Museum of Comic and Cartoon Art is in order. And don't forget about the Mega Toys R Us store located right in Times Square. For more information on all of the fun and attractions that New York City has to offer, please visit www.nycgo.com. This trip is one you don't want to miss. Join us for this ex exciting excursion and leave the driving on us. Sign up today. Seats are limited. Welcome back. Up next is the Recreation Department, where Tammy Cohen will introduce us to new program coordinator Tiffany Heilman and tell us all about the wonderful programs the township has to offer. Hi, my name is Tammy Cohen and I'm the Director of Recreation and Community Programming for Radnor Township. Fall has been a very exciting time for us as we have taken steps towards establishing our department more thoroughly per the township reorganization process. Throughout this process, we've been able to establish ourselves more fully functioning in, by way of our positions, our processes, our policies, our procedures, and of course the development focus on improving our operations, programming, and of course our community events. Our department's expertise coupled with that of our Parks and Recreation Board has lent to, has lent to tremendous success throughout 2011. Due to the expertise and recommendations on important policies and concerns and matters uh, in front of the department as well as the township, the Parks and Recreation Board has done a great job in working with us throughout this process. So I'd like to give a special thank you to each of those members. I'd also like to thank for a moment the hundreds of part-time volunteers, support staff, and program instructors that, have, that we have working for our department as well as the many civic and community organizations that we work very closely with. Today I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about that department's process and also welcome to our department, Tiffany Heilman, who has joined us by taking on the vacant position of program coordinator. So at this moment, I'd like to take a moment and formally introduce Tiffany Heilman. And she's gonna give you a little bit more of an update about herself, as well as some of the exciting things that are planned on the horizon. Hello, my name is Tiffany Heilman, and I'm the new Recreation Program Coordinator with Fradner Township in the Department of Recreation and Community Programming. I'd like to thank Tammy and the other individuals involved in the hiring process, as I am very excited to be part of the Radnor Township Recreation and Community Programming team. Originally, I am from Central Pennsylvania, outside of Hershey. I earned my Master's of Education degree at Millersville University where I studied sport management and I earned my Bachelor's of Science degree in Recreation Management from Lock Haven University. Prior to my role of joining the team here at Radnor Township, I was a program coordinator for Greater Elizabethtown Area Recreation and Community Services. Prior to that role, I was a fitness coordinator at the College of Southern Maryland outside of Washington, D.C. I have a true passion for recreation and serving the community. I not only work in the recreation field, I live it as well. I enjoy being outdoors, strength training, instructing fitness and wellness classes, personal training, and skiing. I'm very excited to create experiences for Radnor Township, and I'm actually in the process of designing a few community events and additional programming for 2012. I'd like to take a minute to talk about our fall programming. Our fall brochure is on the website at www.radnor.com and we are currently taking registrations for several activities such as our Griffin Volleyball, Volleyball Club which does begin early December, our Youth Wrestling Clinic which is Saturdays January through March and our Babysitters Training Class which is December 6th and 8th. Currently we're running an open gym program on Friday nights at the Radnor Activity Center at Sulpizio Gym and that's until November 18th from 6, I'm sorry, from 6 to 9 p.m. Watch for information about youth programming over the winter break, and also look for our winter and spring brochure in November, which does include a preview of summer 2012. 
Thank you to everybody in the Radnor community for taking an opportunity along with our department staff here at the township in welcoming Tiffany Heilman as part of our department. We're very excited at what she'll be able to lend and help us develop for years to come. For everybody out there in the Radnor community who has ideas on new programs or new event ideas, don't hesitate to give us a call as we're always welcome to any new information and any new detail that we can use to benefit the Radnor community. I also want to take a moment to talk a little bit about Radnor Youth Lacrosse for boys and girls. Registration is going to be starting for, that for both of those programs in early January, as well as Radnor Wayne Little League, which includes t-ball, baseball, and softball. Please check out www.radnorsports.com for more information and to register for the variety of spring programs that will be available through these three major organizations here in the Radnor community. For those of you who have been wondering, when is the summer camp information going to be available? Right now, our department is on a pace to try and make this information available to you much earlier than it has been in years past. Please call us on February 1st for more information, primarily about the summer day camp program, specifically Radnor Day Camp, and the summer tot lot program that has traditionally taken place over at Ethan Elementary School. Radnor Day Camp is for ages 5 to 15, the summer tot lot program is for ages three to five. We're also excited as part of those two programs to lend to you an exciting pilot leadership and development training program that's gonna be for middle school ages and teenagers. So please look for more information. As I mentioned, please contact us on February 1st. We'll have more information available. And for the parents looking to register, we are planning a camp registration night specifically for those two programs. So be sure to call us and check out information online at our website for updates and more information and a date. If you're interested in receiving programming updates on events and information that are happening throughout the different seasons and throughout the year, please call or email us in order to be added to our e-blast for recreation news, updates, and details. You can call us at 610-688 5600 and you can ask for extension 149 or 141 and we'll be happy to get you added to that list for more information and for those details. So you can look for those every month and when new information is added in your email. Also be on the lookout for those of you at home in the Radnor community for the early winter township newsletter. That's going to be jam-packed with a lot of information not only specific to our department but to the township and all of its many departments as a whole. Again, if you're looking for information on Radnor Township or the Radnor Township Department of Community Programming and Events, don't hesitate to check out the website at www.radnor.com. Thanks and take care, and have a great holiday season. Up next, we visit with Bill White, the Director of the Finance Department. Thank you, Jim, and here's what's going on in the Finance Department for November 2011 as we uh, start heading down the home stretch of yet another year. Uh, it, time really flies <laughs> here in Radnor Township uh, with so much going on. Uh, it's hard to believe it's already November, but uh, with this being the end of the year, uh, things in the Finance Department are running um, pretty hectic right now, which is normal. It's, it's toward the end of the year, so we're trying to close out one budget year, and at the same time, uh, going through the public process of creating and approving a new budget. So uh, this month, the township manager is working with all the different departments to submit to the board uh, his recommended 2012 budget. Included in that budget package, packet will also be updates to the five-year capital plan. Uh, the 2012 fee schedule and the 2012 uh, salary schedule as well. All of those are required uh, either by the township's charter or administrative code. So that, those are the primary things we're working on. And once submitted to the board, the board will be required, uh, based on a charter requirement, to adopt the preliminary budget uh, or proposed budget. Uh, and that is scheduled to be the first meeting in November. Uh, then we are required again by charter law to, uh, to have a public hearing uh, which will be scheduled for the second meeting in November uh, and then in between there there will be other meetings and deliberations on the budget. Ultimately the plan is to have the budget adopted uh, in mid-December so from the time it gets submitted 
in early November through when it gets adopted, there'll be uh, three, four opportunities for public comment and review. And all the while, the budget will be on the township's website uh, and it'll be available for public review in hard copy here at the township building. So uh, if you're interested in being part of the process or you just want to know what's going on, uh, I would recommend that you, you go to the township website. A lot of the information will be out there for you to follow along with. Uh, some of the things that we're looking to improve this year with the 12 budget uh, are a little bit more programmatic accounting or at least planning numbers. We don't have the accounting infrastructure and backbone yet to do a full programmatic accounting system. So we're, we're, what we're trying to do is create, take, manipulate or take our current data, uh, put it onto spreadsheets, apply hours and estimates to it, and convert it into some sort of programmatic estimates for the budget. Uh, unfortunately, we'll, we'll put those together for the budget and we'll be able to say with, with uh, some level of confidence how much we're spending on the different services that the township provides. Um, but unfortunately, throughout the year, uh, it'll be very difficult administratively for us to, to check how we're doing. And we won't be able to really go back and reconcile those numbers until we're at the end of 12. So uh, hopefully at some point in the future, we're able to rectify that and uh, have the accounting up and running on a monthly basis, but for the time being, at least as an improvement so we can demonstrate to the stakeholders how much these different services are costing, uh, we can put that together in the budget packet. So that's one of the primary improvements we're looking on doing, is so that when you look in the budget, you can, you can see in the executive summary out of a, a public works budget that may be close to $5 million, you know, this, this amount is for the solid waste collection or the garbage collection. This amount is for recycling. This amount is for the leaf collection. This amount is for snow and ice removal during the winter. Uh, this amount is for general highway services where we're out repairing street lights, traffic signals, potholes, curb and drainage, uh, as well as sewers. So, uh, there's, there's the whole litany, litany of services provided by the Public Works Department. Our goal is to take those and, and try to, as best we can, assign costs to that. Most of which, 70, 80 percent of the costs associated with those services are payroll, um, being that there are people providing the service. So we already have the non-payroll side. We, do, we already have the ability to assign those costs. So now it's a matter of taking the payroll data and and splitting it up and assigning it accordingly. So uh, that's one of the primary things we're working on now and trying to incorporate into the budget. Additionally, with recreational programming is putting a, a comprehensive table together that demonstrates uh, these are the number of programs that we offer throughout the year. This is the total estimated revenue that we anticipate generating through those programs. These are the direct costs. These are the, this is the overhead. Uh, with the recreation uh, department here in the township, and this is the bottom line. So we can we can gauge uh, how much revenue we're collecting versus how much it costs to provide those. Uh, so those are the two primary areas that we're focusing on improving in, in the 2012 budget. Uh, in addition, uh, the board has considered uh, putting together a monthly calendar that will begin in December of 2012 and go through uh, July of 2013, where each month the board addresses certain um, major topics uh, that, that require some board review and decision on how to address moving forward. It's more of a strategic level discussions on major items including stormwater, uh, long-term uh, benefit funding for retirees, for the township employees, uh, a capital program, uh, departmental staffing levels, you know, those types of things from a strategic point of view so that as we go through 2012, we're actually putting the building blocks together for the 13 budget. So uh, those discussions are going on right now as well here in November of 2011, trying to prepare for uh, the future months. Some of the other more administrative things going on in the department include uh, we're currently looking to fill a vacant position at the assistant finance director's position. As part of that, um, the duties of the Act 511 revenue collection uh, have been redelegated in the department, and we have recently purchased new 
uh, software that assists in the administration of uh, the Act 511 uh, revenues. So we are going through the conversion process and trying to get that software up and running. Um, so that will have significant improvements on how we are able to administer the program in terms of data entry and reporting and tracking. Uh, but additionally, down the line, the software will be capable of providing online access to the businesses of the township so they can file and pay online. So we are working towards that with that new software as well. Uh, in addition, uh, we, are, we continue to work on implementing new policies and procedures, uh, mostly in the expenditure and revenue control areas. Uh, and those are, those are just necessary as good management practices, but those are things that we're addressing as we move along. And as we change a lot of our processes, we're working on documenting and building in the controls necessary to safeguard uh, assets. Along those same lines, uh, the Citizens Audit Review and Financial Advisory Committee, also known as CARFAC, they've been meeting regularly since the end of July. And one of the primary focuses of that group um, is in internal controls. They wanted to make sure that we were doing what we need to do to, to implement those. So we're following their lead and their recommendation on implementing as many of those as we, as we can, given our, our staffing and our resources. Some of the other major things that the CARFAC group is working on, and uh, which is a tremendous assistance to the township and, and to uh, stakeholders, it, this is an excellent group of uh, extremely intelligent and dedicated individuals, volunteers, that are coming in and spending a few nights a week with us and trying to put uh, a, a whole list of things together. Those, those include uh, preparing for the 2011 audit, which will begin in early December, uh, as well as um, helping us through uh, best practice and their recommendations on internal control improvements. Uh, they're also assisting on building a multiple year forecast on all of our revenues and expenditures, as well as identifying best practices and funding for capital other post-employment benefits and pension. Uh, another group of the CARFAC is also looking through or working with us to look through all of our revenue collection processes uh, to see if any enhancements can be made to bolster the percentage of revenue collection we get, uh, making sure that we are getting what we should be in the different revenue areas, uh, which will be extremely helpful as well. And then finally, they're also assisting on uh, going through our IT infrastructure in terms of the finance department and helping to uh, make recommendations and and see you know what improvements could be made in that area as well and then finally uh, through that group we're also talking uh, or looking at the ben the potential benefits of uh, outsourcing some of our internal functions uh, that will help help on the control aspect but also free up resources to uh, begin to do some of the things, some of the other things that the department needs to be doing. So uh, there's a there's a lot going on in the finance department. Uh, luckily, we have good people here that are dedicated to seeing this, seeing things get done and making improvements. Uh, and at the end of the day, with the real goal being, you know, what's in the best interest of the uh, the stakeholders of Radnor Township. So. Uh, it's a lot of fun to be a part of, and uh, I would recommend if, if you're interested, and uh, go to the township's website. There's information out there. If you have any questions, please call or email, and we'll try to get those answered for you right away. Thank you, and we'll see you next month. And now, a few more announcements from the Recreation Department. Get into the holiday spirit. The date has been set for our annual holiday event, Holiday at the Willows, on Sunday, December 11th from 2 to 4 p.m. We are working with Radnor Girl Scouts to offer holiday-related ornament and craft making for children who attend, along with providing interactive entertainment, music, face painting, balloon sculpting, and Santa Claus. Our department has received a sponsorship from TD Bank, and our thanks go out to you. In early October, the Township Manager, Bob Zinkowski, kicked off the Township Manager's Health and Wellness Challenge, where he made a commitment to donate $10 for every pound he loses, now through November 22nd, to the Wayne Senior Center's Wellness Program, with a goal of losing 30 pounds. He is challenging members of the Radnor community to participate in the effort to improve the health overall of Radnor Township. Our department encourages the Radnor community to take part in this exciting program by making a commitment of their own to improve a component of their lifestyle, such as eating healthy, quitting smoking, improving water intake, 
or exercising for the benefit of their own defined charity. Share your story with us as we make steps towards a healthier and more energized community. Radnor Township is pleased to announce a new program aimed at recognizing the outstanding efforts of Radnor's best community organizations, businesses, residents, and township employees. The five Rising Above Award categories include Radnor Township Outstanding Employee Performance Award, the Outstanding Community Service Award, the Future of Radnor Award, the Outstanding Business Award, and the Outstanding Radnor Township Community Organization Award. Nominations will be accepted during the month of January in 2012, and the awards will be presented at a later date in the spring. Stay tuned to the Radnor Township website, www.radnor.com, for further details. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and remember, RTV is your information station.